Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this little laptop is the One Netbook A1, which is a, a mini PC that's designed for engineers, IT administrators, and so forth. And the reason that I say that is not just because of marketing, but because if you take a look at the back here, what sets it apart from other little laptops with seven inch displays is some of these full size ports. We've got a full sized ethernet, we've got full sized RS-232 serial port, as well as a couple of USB free ports and a micro HDMI port on the other side or on the, around the side here, we've got USB type C for charging or data and a micro SD card reader and a headphone jack. And so these full size ports are things that not necessarily everybody's gonna need in a laptop or a mini laptop in 2020, unless you have some really old hardware that you need to plug in. But for IT administrators, they can come in handy if you're just looking for a small device that you can take with you uh, just about anywhere and plug in to do debugging or whatever on a network. Um, and so one of these other interesting things here, this is optional, but it has this wrist strap that allows you to sort of carry it around and make sure that you can hold it in one hand without dropping it. So that is the basic idea of the use case for the A1. And let's take a little look at uh, how it works. Now, this is a pre-production prototype that was sent to me by the folks at One Netbook. So there are some differences between this and the final version, but it's up for pre-order now starting at about $600 per model with a Core M3 8100Y processor, eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage. You can also pay a little bit extra for a 512 gig storage version. So first thing is there's a fingerprint sensor right there in the power button, works reasonably well. Second thing I wanna show you is it is a convertible tablet, but unlike a lot of the ones we've seen recently, it doesn't bend all the way down this way because that would cover those full size ports in the back. Instead, sort of like an old school laptop, it converts into a tablet by shifting 180 degrees and then folding down flat. So you can pick it up and hold it this way, hold it this way, and still have access to those ports if you need them. Uh, it's also kind of convenient, I think, to prop it up if you're just looking for a display that you can use in this mode. Now, again, this is an engineering prototype that was sent to me for testing purposes, and the hinge feels a little bit less sturdy than I would like. It feels like if you've sort of pushed down too hard here, you run the risk of uh, having it all fall off. And um, you can sort of, under some circumstances, scrape the bottom there when you're rotating it. I'm told that the hinge on the production version is gonna be a little bit sturdier, but I can't say that for certain. Another difference in this prototype is that this version actually has an older processor, a Core M7, 7Y75 processor, which is a little bit less powerful actually than the M3 8100Y processor. So I ran some benchmarks and you can find the details at lilliputing.com, but I would take all of that with a grain of salt. I can't really tell you too much about performance other than the fact that I suspect performance on the retail version will be slightly better in a lot of respects than what I saw on this version. As for what you can do with it, the Core M3 or the Core 7, 7Y75 processor are low power chips that are not really designed for high performance computing, but they are decent enough for general performance tasks. So I'm not an IT engineer. I didn't really spend a lot of time using it necessarily for that intended use case, but I did confirm that you can do things like watch 4K video, even though it's got a 1920 by 1200 pixel display, you can see that it's set for 4K streaming here. This is over Wi-Fi, of course. So it's pretty smooth there. Uh, you can use it for other general purpose computing tasks. Uh, I ran, as I mentioned, a bunch of benchmarks, which look at uh, office performance and so forth. And, you know, it handles multitasking and, and other basic uh, duties reasonably well. Now, there are a couple of quirks about most of these little laptops with seven inch displays. Uh, the biggest one is that the keyboard is really pretty tiny and it can make uh, typing a little bit difficult. I'm able to get around 60 to 70 words per minute when I really focus on what I'm doing using this keyboard. On a full size keyboard, I can usually get closer to 90 or 100 words per minute. So your results may vary. There's no room for a regular touchpad, so instead we have this sort of touch-sensitive controller down here under uh, underneath, 
And, you know, it's not going to support multi-touch gestures or anything, but you can move the cursor around on the screen if you need to. And we've got left and right click buttons here. Uh, you might have noticed that the keyboard is backlit. It's backlit with a red illumination. You can't change that in any way. And there's uh, various shortcuts for different functions. So, for instance, I can actually toggle the fan on and off uh, depending on whether I want to prioritize silent performance or general performance by... Uh, hitting sort of that fan speed button. There's also uh, one over here, and I'm not entirely sure which one does what, but those are some of your options. Uh, one weird thing on this particular keyboard is that the volume or the display brightness buttons are reversed. So this one takes it up and this one takes it down. Not really sure why that is. If you do volume, they work as expected with left going down and right going up. Might be different on the production unit. Not really that big a deal, but it is something that takes a little getting used to. And then, of course, what really takes getting used to is some of these smaller keys, like the half-width punctuation keys and also the location of those keys. So having the colon and semicolon and apostrophe and parentheses next to the space bar instead of up in a higher row like they usually are. But overall, I'm reasonably pleased. I think uh, this is... I don't even know what number in the series that uh, one netbook has put out of seven inch mini PCs. And I think that they've done a pretty decent job of making a seven inch keyboard uh, just about as usable as I think you can expect. Uh, for some reason, they have this same keyboard, I think, as on the GX1 mini gaming PC. So they've got the gaming buttons here highlighted. Not necessarily something that you need here, but it probably helps cut down on production costs if they can use the same keyboard for multiple devices. So that is a look at some of the basic features. It also supports pen input. Um, my handwriting is pretty awful, but I'll just show, so I don't really use a pen too much, but I'll show you, we can open up the whiteboard application here. Let's dim the screen a little bit. Switch over to tablet mode. And we could use a pen to do a little drawing. Let's see if it supports any sort of palm rejection. I mean, it's actually pretty easy to reject your palm because the way that this is set up, there's a nice big bezel down here, but put my palm on the screen, no problems. So uh, pen input works reasonably well. Now, I didn't spend a lot of time extensively testing anything other than Windows, but I did want to show that because this is aimed at uh, network engineers and uh, developers that, um, among other things, you can install Ubuntu or other Windows subsystem for Linux software. And navigate your uh, file system that way. Run commands like top. And if you really want to get adventurous, you can boot from a USB flash drive if you wanted to install or run a different operating system. So I've actually got Ubuntu on this drive. So let's go ahead and reboot into Ubuntu. And in order to do that, I'm going to sort of hammer the delete key once we get to the restart menu so that I can get into the uh, UEFI or BIOS settings. And once you do, you notice that everything looks a little bit sideways. And that's because, as often is the case with these little guys, uh, I think one netbook opted to use a tablet display. And so uh, the system thinks that it should be in portrait mode. But if we go use the arrow keys here, we can sort of navigate down to the boot override options and choose to boot from a USB flash drive. Again, Grub is sideways, but I'm going to choose to boot from the first option, which is Ubuntu, and then let that go. Uh, while we're waiting for that to happen, I'll show you this is the power adapter. It's a little bit larger than, say, a typical smartphone adapter, but it, uh, we don't need to do a system check here. Um, but it uh, does plug into the USB Type-C port, and it's reasonably compact. doesn't add a lot of size or weight if you need to carry it around. And you might need to carry it around because I did notice that um, in a video streaming test, I managed to get around four and a half to five hours worth of uh, battery life when doing YouTube video streaming at 
1080p resolution over Wi-Fi. Uh, Real-world performance is probably going to vary depending on what you're using. All right, so we're going to just try Ubuntu here. Uh, in terms of size and weight, this thing measures about 6.8 inches by 5.3 inches by 0 0.7 inches thick when closed, weighs about 1.2 pounds or 550 grams. So there you go. We've got Ubuntu up and running here. The touchscreen sort of works, but you'll notice that while the screen orientation is accurate, when I try to touch different parts of the display, it detects the touch. But what's actually happening is it thinks the screen is sideways. And you can really see this, I think, more when you bring in the pen, because if I actually, there we go. Pen seems to be working better this time than it did last time I tried it, but it's a little bit wonky. So I think it's possible that maybe some sort of driver update or something else might be required in order to get things to work properly. Because right now I'm not pressing any buttons and it seems to think that I've depressed uh, for a click. Um, screen brightness buttons, again, are reversed, but they work. And again, touching the screen a little bit on the wonky side. Um, but that said, I can use this driver. I can select my wireless network. I could also plug in an Ethernet cable if I wanted to. Let's go ahead and uh, type in our password. Open up Firefox. And let's do... Trusty Big Buck Bunny 4K yet again. Keep needing to remember not to touch the screen. And this time, I'll show you that we've got it set for 1080p at 60 frames per second. And that looks okay. It's maybe a little choppy. No, I think it's pretty smooth. But anything higher than this, I've had trouble with. So I'm going to go to 1440p. Click play. And now you can see it's a little bit less smooth. And if I went to 4K, going to turn into something a little bit more like a slideshow, I think. So we know that the hardware is capable of it, but I think you might need uh, graphics driver updates or some other optimizations in order to get 4K streaming working on Ubuntu. Uh, the other thing that's a little bit weird, and I think this is related to the display issues that, uh, that cause touch and pen to be a little bit funky, is while automatic screen rotation is detected, it's in this mode upside down. <laughs> it seems to happen pretty consistently. This is just using the out of the box settings, but if I flip the screen over in portrait mode, it invariably has it upside down from what you want. Now there are probably ways to override this. You probably don't want to have to do that manually every time you open the computer, but um, It is what it is. So uh, I would call Ubuntu out of the box performance a little bit of a mixed bag, but Wi-Fi works, audio works, video seems to work. Uh, so there's your sort of general look at uh, Linux performance. Again, could be different with different operating systems or advanced users might be able to do some uh, uh, alternate drivers or other settings. But I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what you can expect from this little device. Um, you know, one, one last thing before we go. So, Right now, this is over Wi-Fi, and it's reasonably fast. Um, it's got support for Wi-Fi uh, 6 and Bluetooth 4.2, I believe. Or is it Wi-Fi 5? Uh, you can find the complete details at lilliputing.com, uh, where I'll have more information. But we've got a pretty fast connection going there. We could also plug in an Ethernet 
cable here. And I don't think that it's going to be substantially faster, but let's go ahead and turn off Wi-Fi and run that test again. Okay, something a little funny is happening there. There we go. Again, similar speed. Uh, last time I ran this, I managed to get something like 110 or whatever, but the cap here is basically my internet connection, not necessarily the hardware. So if you have, um, if you're doing a direct connection to high speed uh, software or high speed hardware, you can probably go a little bit faster than this as well. But that is a quick look at the fact that Ethernet works, Wi-Fi works in Ubuntu, in Windows, and so on. So that is the One Netbook A1. This is a preview again because the processor isn't finalized, and I'm told that the hinge is going to be a little bit sturdier in the final version. But I wanted to give you a look of what to expect from this device, available for pre-order for about $600 and up. Uh, retail price is going to be about $650 and up for a model with 8 gigs and 256 gigs. You pay a little bit more for 512, and it should be generally available starting around November 13th. You can find purchase links in the description to this video and more information at lilliputing.com, link also in the description to this video. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.